Hi you guys, this is Rachel Kirkland here, the Modern Shaman. Thanks for being with me for another YouTube Q&A video of the week. We are counting down, getting close to the end of 2020. And boy, has it been a monumental year. We may have had years like this in previous lives, but this lifetime, this year, has been one for the books. <laughs> My future sister-in-law, is that, is that, yes, I think that's, <laughs> gave my daughter and I a t-shirt that was like a Christmas themed t-shirt and she gave it to us, it was so thoughtful, this uh, Thanksgiving and it said, 2020, you'll go down in history <laughs> and it had like a little Rudolph, you know, and it was so cute. Anyways, mimicking that song, you know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, you're going down in history. So all that being said, this year, yeah, it's definitely been one for the books and we're counting down as we're nearing the end here. And um, my heart is really and genuinely just hoping and praying and uh, setting a sense of intention for you all that the end of this year feel somewhat like a balm, you know what I mean? Like B-A-L-M, <laughs> like balm, like just like a soothing, nurturing, healing ointment on all those cracks and things that have felt like they've been pulling you apart or splitting you or been dried and unfed and unnurtured. I just hope that by the end of this year that the energy is somewhat soothing to you and soothing to your experience and that in some way, shape, or form you feel nurtured enough to remember who you truly are and what you're truly capable of and your absolute divine glory and um, that sense of just your own radiance. I hope you feel that. That's my little gift and prayer for you all for the end of this year. Hmm. All right, I'm going to move into the question of the week. As you all know, if you're not new to this channel, you can send in questions and I read them on here and answer them. As <laughs> simple as that. So this question came in from a viewer and it says, Hi Rachel, I love your channel. I appreciate all that you share and I've been following you from years, for years. This is the first time I've asked a question, and honestly, oftentimes when I read the questions, they seem like the perfect one for me. So I haven't had a desire to send them in. This is more of a fun question that I thought would be interesting to hear your perspective on. I've always been curious about the nature of creative thought. For example, books or movies, does the author or writer tap into a dimension where the said story is alive and actually real and they simply become the narrator of this other world? Or does spirit simply gift us our creative thoughts? What is your take? Mm, that is a fun question. I like answering fun questions. I don't get them that often. A lot of times I get maybe intense questions <laughs> or stuff that people are struggling with. So let's talk about creative thoughts. When we first open into this topic of creativity or inspiration, I have to give a little caveat here because in my experience over many years of delving and contacting and being in communication with the non-physical world, the spiritual world, which is my every day, <laughs> and even before I did this for a living, it was still very, very dominant in my life, meaning I, I would meditate for two hours a day every day for years before I ever sought to like do something like this as a living. Um, it wasn't, I mean, that unfolded very differently, but it's still, just, it's just who I am. It's just what I'm interested in. It's what I'm seeking. I've always been that person. Even as a child, I was that person. I mean, I ha you can't see it, but see where I'm pointing? Ooh, I did that really good. Sometimes it's hard on here to mirror um, when I'm pointing out, but this little photo, you can't see. This is a photo of me when I'm probably like six years old and I'm reading someone's palm. <laughs> it was a Christmas party 
And I don't even know how I knew how to do that because I have no conscious memory of that moment. But uh, someone took a picture of me and there's orbs all around my head <laughs> in one of those old, you know, 70s photographs. And I'm reading someone's poems. I, I was always, always into it. No one ever had to teach me how to be interested in this. And so all that being said, I want to say that just what I believe in my experience is that the energy of inspiration or what you call creative thought, I'm going to define or I'm going to language as inspiration. To me, this is the spark of God. This is the spark of the divine, of a luminous, literally, like when I see it, when my eyes are closed and I'm moving into my clairvoyance, it looks like a spark. It, it, it looks like a spark. <laughs> um, I, I don't have any word more precise than that. That's exactly what it looks like on the inside of my clairvoyance. And um, the amount of energy held within that spark are, is, is a sense of creation potential. And we, if we are clairsentient, a lot of times we feel this. We feel this like we want... Uh, we, we literally get uh, heart palpitations. We get excited. Um, there is a responsiveness to our body and the sensations of our humanness that says, yes, I want more of that. That feels good. I love that thought. I love that idea. And, and we cannot help but move in the direction of our luminance, of this creative inspiration from the divine. So I feel like these are experiences with uh, the God source, creation itself, which what is the energy of the creator, but fractals of creation, of creation energy, of potential energy, right? And so all that being said, when you ask this question of, of creative thoughts, and the creator when you are first of all in that energy you are emanating your divine nature your aspect that mirrors the cosmos the supreme intelligence of creation god whatever you call it you are mirroring that and you are embodying that in probably your most refined or or uh, highest vibrational capacity this is also true of what people um, call love because love is an expression of creation in a very very pure vibrational state meaning there's not a lot of density to it it is pure creation it is expression that comes from a space that doesn't have a lot of uh, noise or or any sort of interference of vibration that would feel like it brings us down or that it would feel like it compares us to others, or it feels like it causes doubt. No, it is pure, that loving, creative expression is that pure sense of creator energy. And it is also an inspiring momentum to do, to give, to love, to uh, create music and create poetry and create stories. When I look at your question and you say, are we tapping into another dimension and then just narrating things that are true? It makes me uh, move into the awareness more so of string theory, everything, uh, the, the theory of everything, all these interconnected cosmic web type of expressions of the cosmos and how everything is quantumly connected and the awareness that everything that can exist does exist. Now, whether or not we tune into that is based on our frequency, right? Like our radio dial of what station we're tuning into. All of those music stations, if we think about radio, exist out there, but we're not always tuned into those frequencies. We're not always turning on our radio in order to receive the information that's being emanated out all the time. And so the same is true about 
these creations that exist in other realms, in different dimensional spaces, which are accessible by frequency. It doesn't mean that they're not valid. They are valid and they are present, but we are not always in alignment with them or tuning into them and therefore they're not always relevant for our experience. And so, do they exist? Are we tapping into them when you talk about um, a sense of inspiration? Our inspiration is that divine spark and then we recognize what is it that we are wanting to create? What is it that we resonate with? Resonating is that linking up of harmonious frequencies. And so we have something that is projecting a radio signal, and I'm just using this comparative here. It's putting out that radio frequency and it is a 50s channel, a bebop channel. And we're looking through the channels and we're turning our dial and turning our dial until we hit that 50s station and then we're like, mmm, yeah, I'm grooving to this. I'm in this, I'm in this mode of like 50s bebop, right? I'm feeling it today. This is resonance, resonant harmony of our frequency, of our own electromagnetic current, which is pumping and being created from our heart space to that that is somewhere else. And this heart space and this electromagnetic frequency in us can be ignited with that sense of creation energy and we've got the spark and here we are emanating at this particular potential frequency and here's a radio dial that's on the same wavelength and we're in the mood for it. We are resonant with what it has to offer. And then we start writing and channeling the story. And this is just as much the, uh, just as real as our dream space, as our daydreaming, as our imagination. These are thought forms. They are forms, but they are just not 3D forms. They are not dimensional in this space. But it doesn't make them less real. It just makes them a different frequency tone. And when we tune to that, they become very real. When we move them onto paper, they become 3D. When we move them into video, they become dimensional experiences and it, uh, accessible to those that watch the video. So they are very much real, but just as real as our dream space or our daydreams or our imagination space. They are thought forms that hold a sense of relevancy in their other form. There are many, many different forms that we interact with all the time that are part of our true experience, but that are not materialized into 3D. They are in a different dimensional space. Uh, when you ask that idea of like, does, simply, does spirit simply gift us creative thoughts? Yes. <laughs> These things are not combative. Like I don't feel like creative thoughts being given to us as gifts or things existing in other planes and dimensional spaces and us tuning into them. It's not an either or. They don't cancel each other out. They don't negate one another. They exist simultaneously as uh, an expression, one of which may feel more short-lived and um, inspirational, like a gift, like here you are, and one of wh which may be very uh, intentional, like I'm going to sit down and I'm going to work on my writing today. I'm a writer. I'm going to write 20 minutes every day. I'm going to get in my journal. And you may know how to motivate yourself into the frequency of a particular current and momentum and hit that radio dial every day. That doesn't mean that the creation that's coming through you is any less of a gift as one that seems like the spark came suddenly from the non-physical and visited you and planted itself down in your lap. I will say that some information or some connections that we receive feel like they carry more power more purpose within them. Just like when we have particular dreams and we think that dream was important. It felt different to me. I need to write it down. I need to share that vision with so-and-so that was in that dream with me. Sometimes part of the multidimensional message that we are tuning into and receiving and are in resonant harmony with also has a sense of information about how it should be shared. It has a timeline. I can't tell you how many clients I've worked with that say, I feel like this needs to be finished by such and such a date. This book that I'm channeling needs to be out by such and such a date. 
there is communication when it is multidimensional in those aspects that overlays not just the creative vision, but also a timeline, also a sense of purpose, also how it should be used, how it should be expressed. There's so much more in the creation aspect than just what we see and what we end with. Uh, there, there's really infinite potential available in those expressions. And uh, much like when we receive a digital image, we can get down to the pixels, zooming in, looking at every little detail, um, or we can pan out. And all of that is stored in a level of information and may have relevancy for us. So I love your question. It's a fun question just to answer and talk about as a topic. And I hope for you, it gives you some sort of motivation to uh, invite in the divine in a beautiful sense of collaboration, realizing that um, it, it is absolutely a gift and it is absolutely something that exists that you're tapping into. Um, to me, that is the mystery and magic of the non-physical that we get to be a part of and uh, express. Mm -hmm. I hope that's a blessing to you guys. <laughs>